part of town, and um, never up. I never knew quite exactly what I really wanted to do. But I'm actually I was talking to my mom today, and she was saying like I couldn't find something that Elijah was good at. You know, what's he good at? And um, I, mean, I, I, I was kind of a quitter. I'd give up with stuff, and you know, but I found a passion in athletics, and especially with running. And that's kind of why I enjoyed it. Was it was, you know, I was in control of my own destiny running. You know, you can, as hard as you want to work, as much time as you want to put into it, and as serious as you want to be, that's as good as you can get. I mean, of course, you're going to have your know, limitations, and you understand that. But, um, you know, with good coaching and good practice and patience, you can accomplish a lot of goals, and that's a lot of fun. So, you know, when I was doing a track in junior high, and that's when I started joining a club team in high school, and with Lucas Vigo High School, my uh, I ran, um, you know, my sophomore year I ran 151 in the 800 and like 357. Then my junior year I went 147 in the 800 and then like a, I don't run my 1500. And then my senior year I went 148 and 349. And then I went to U of O. And then in college I ran 145 and I went to NCAA as my senior year for indoor and outdoor. And then last year was my first professional year. And uh, that's where I finally started struggling with injuries, so it's usually pretty healthy throughout college. And that's kind of where I've been at right now is I have a Achilles tendonitis in you know, my right heel, and it's kind of having to rediscover a new part of running, dealing with injury. That's a really real part of athletics, and so it's you know it's a great reminder to always take care of your body. And when things kind of come up like this, kind of hurts. If my hamstring bothers me, my hip bothers you, like you know, don't just ignore that. Don't ignore pain or anything. So always make sure you're kind of listening to yourself. Just you know. You're you're the best advocator for yourself, you know. And I mean, I understand like when you do like running and track, like you don't always know what you want. I mean, maybe you don't want to go with this. Your parents are making you do things, and that that's fair, you know. But you know, the the more you do stuff that you enjoy, like the more you get out of it. So it's always good to be pretty real. Uh, do you guys have any questions? I mean, I, I was kind of a pretty, pretty <laughs> jump around there, but I guess kind of how was high school track? How was running junior high? How did I get into it? What do I enjoy? Pre-race rituals, you know, kind of anything that you questions you have with running, or like, why are you even here? Like, what? Why do you enjoy it? Like, uh, um, you know, someone that's kind of been through there, had success. Uh, um, um, I was just wondering what your PRs were again. Yeah. So, um, I guess I can give a little. I, I briefly mentioned that. So in junior high, uh, that's where I started getting into track. I did a club team, and I ran two flat and four fourteen in eighth grade. And then uh, I thought I was going to be more going to be a runner. And then I kind of switched out of the 8 because it was a little easier. And honestly, you run less miles in the 800. Is you truly get to be more of a middle distance sprinter. You know, you do 400 meter training and 800, 1500 meter training, so you mix it up. But I don't like cross country that much. So it's, it's enjoyable for me to just do the 8 to 15. But my PRs are 144.91. And when I did that, I don't have my official splits, but I probably went through about 50.8. And then um, that would put me about, and then a 54, 54 flat. So that's typically how you run the 800, about two to two and a half seconds spread. And some guys would do less, and some guys would do more. But and for the 1500, I ran 343, but I think I can go faster than that. But yeah, everyone probably picks that too. And then I split a uh, 46 2 on their 4x4. Four four. So 46 3, and it's all hand time, but I'll take the 46 2. <laughs> all right, any other questions? You're, uh, when you ran that 147, is that, is it junior national? Yeah. No one's ever ran faster than junior national? Uh, yeah, so, um, you know, that was really my, my breakout year. So, like, um, you know, like you guys, yeah, I was kind of involved in these camps like this. And, um, you know, I wanted to be good. I, mean, I didn't really know how good I was. And so, you know, I kind of started committing to just training year round, doing all these things. And um, in high school, I got pretty good on one state my senior year, but it was like, you know, so you're good at one level, can you take it to the next level? Maybe you guys are good at your, you're the best guy in your school, but are you the best guy in your league? You know, so you're kind of, you know, wondering how you can transition to the next level. And so I got into this big meet. You know, there's all these other guys that are pretty intimidating. And um, the Junior Nationals, that's the race I ran at, it has people that are 19 and under. So there's some college freshmen, and they were kind of from around the country. And that was one of my first um, races that really involved people from like, across the United States of America. And, um, I remember that day that the race it got delayed. There's a big storm that came, and it's something to always be prepared about. Is stuff will kind of come up in the way, and that doesn't mean that like say if like 
say if like you show up like to the meet or you know your mom like forgets to like pack your lunch and don't get food like you know, things sometimes get in the way and like when that day I ran that 147 like things were wrong you know like like oh like this thing like, maybe I shouldn't have ran fast but you know the race was delayed but I was ready for that um, I wasn't super confident but I was still kind of ready for that but at that meet um, you know things just came together we got off really hard and uh, came through ran 147.68 and that was a junior class national record so for like 17 year old kids basically that was the fastest time and that still is thankfully you know it's probably get broken eventually but you know it's, it's exciting for our track because there's always new and upcoming guys that will beat regular records was that junior olympics as in like the usatf stuff or something so there, else? there are different uh, <clears throat> Things. What I did was the Junior Nationals, and Junior Olympics is different. I did compete in the Junior Olympics too, and, um, and honestly, when I did Junior Olympics, I wasn't even like that good. Like the first time I did it, I didn't make it to the, I didn't make it out like the second round, and then the year after that, I came dead last in my race. Yeah, I made it to the Nationals. My parents actually took me to, I think, like, uh, I forget where I went, maybe like, uh, Illinois. They took me to Illinois, and I came in dead last. You know, it was, so I definitely had some of those struggles. And um, yeah, so there's different things, and I think for you guys, what you decided, and you know, go pursue them. But you know, and just because you're not the best in one doesn't mean you can't get better too. You know, I, I did the and wasn't that great at it. Yeah. What did you major in that you evolved? So I was a business major, and um, you know, in high school I was interested in engineering, and so I looked at other schools that had uh, engineering programs. But um, you know, I. Uh, to be honest, you know, I said like, what am I best at? You know, what am I doing <coughs> most amount of time? And you know, it's kind of has been athletics, and I can still get a good career at U of O in Oregon. They still have some good degrees, so I went with business and I minored in economics. And um, yeah, like, yeah, I think it's important for you guys, like, you know, you want to pursue like what you're good at in your dreams, and like, don't leave stuff left behind. You know, like, uh, you know, athletics isn't a, a serious career move for most people, so you don't want to just be blind, but also, if you have an opportunity, like you know, give yourself a fair shot too. Yeah, well, keep it, keep it running. Huh? Did uh, U of O, even though you don't really like cross country, did you have to run it? Yeah, they um they you know pushed me in that direction. You know, uh, coach for my first three years of Inland Nana, you know, he really believed in me. Um, he says, you yeah, you should be able to do this. And when I did it, I I still have the quite the same touch as some of the other guys that do cross country. And I think that's important to realize for you as an athlete, like, um, you know, you're not going to be good at it. And you, sometimes you just can't force it. Like, and it may, maybe if you play enough time over the years, you'll be good at it. But, um, you know, they try to have you run some cross country races. But bottom line, like, I wasn't a varsity athlete. So if you're not varsity, you're not going to be competing anyways. And so they're trying to stay home. But, um, yeah, in the fall, we train as a cross country athlete. And, I mean, maybe like they would do. Eight by thousand meter repeat now would be six by thousand, so you know I do a little less volume. But um, yeah, overall my college experience, uh, they were, you know, Oregon was very good at listening to me, very good at looking at my best interests and you know like what works for me and what doesn't work for me. And <coughs> as an athlete, like, and even kind of as like a student and as a person that's growing up, you got to figure out what works for you and you know kind of control as much as you can control. You why you want to listen and you want to be able to be a good listener and that will make you great by kind of getting the advice of people above you but also knowing and understanding when to interject and speak into. Yeah. Uh, what's your favorite workout you do? You know my um, my favorite training sessions are uh, usually something about 400 meter intervals. Um, you know I don't like full out sprinting where you do like 120 or like 200 meters because you know for me like it's I don't enjoy the acceleration I enjoy like the rhythm. And then the stuff that once I'm doing like two, three, four laps around the track, or I'm doing like thousand meter repeats or mile repeats, it's just so boring long. And I hate tempo runs. Like, um, you know, I've thrown up after, I've thrown up at every workout, but <laughs> it's not a great thing to be puking. Um, you know, but that's just how hard I like to train. So you gotta know when to back off. But four meter repeats, is my favorite stuff because I can get a good rhythm, I can work it well. And I guess one of my my best workouts was in. In college, my senior year, my coach had me do three by four hundred. So we had eight minutes rest in each interval, and I went fifty one low, and then forty nine high, and then forty seven high. And that's all hand time, so you gotta you gotta probably add a half a second to at least the forty nine and forty seven. But um, you know, we've done a lot of workouts like six by four hundred. You know, getting down to fifty two, you know, starting at like 56, 57, with like three minutes rest. 
and you know, in the, my coach now currently will do workouts. Maybe like a thousand meter repeat five by two hundred, a thousand meter repeat five by two, and then do three sets of that. So that adds up to six thousand meters of volume. And, and um, you know, like, like I think there's going to be like workouts like you don't like workouts you do, and then like days that feel good and days that feel bad. And, and it's, you know, the the best advice is like don't give yourself a reason to why you're going to fail. Like don't like start that workout and say, oh, I hate this workout. Or, Oh, maybe like I didn't get enough sleep last night, or I just feel like crap. You no, know, don't ever like be thinking those thoughts. And I mean, but it's good to communicate with a coach, like, hey, like, you know, I didn't sleep well last night. You know, I know you said you want me to hit a 65 for my first one. Maybe we start with a 68, and then if I feel good, I'll I'll take over the workout. You know, but you know, kind of just tell them that. And you know, maybe your coach is like, no, I need you to hit 65. We're gonna do this, and if you die, you die. But you know, like, kind of communicate and build that relationship. And you know. So with the level you guys are at, you know, there may be like just 12 of you to one coach and he's going to be like, right, we're all working out together and, and you may not have that control, like, you know, like communication, but, um, you know, I guess in those situations, like, if you feel bad, like, you know, just sit in the back, you know, like, and, but don't be telling yourself, like, I'm just out here dying, like, this sucks, uh, just like, how you think and what you think about as you're running, like, that, that really does matter, like, negative thoughts, uh, excuses, like reasons to why this is going to be bad. Like that, that's that's a no no. And so how you think of it instead is you just want to think about like, all right, like I can do this. All right, this is pretty manageable. You know, I'm going to go a little easier for this first part and let myself feel good. Like how can I feel good? How easy can I make it look? How smooth can I make it look? And so my favorite stuff when I run is I want to I want to let the coach know how good I look. It's just like all right, like how easy? How, how much can I make his jaw drop when he sees me run. You know, that's kind of how I'm thinking about it. You know, how much can I make him, like, wow, this is an amazing athlete. And, and you know, it's, and I'm, I'm definitely more person that goes by feel, so I can kind of get that feel, and I can make that feel, but and the, there are other athletes that have different types of strengths. You know, some guys are just like, they're just tough as nails, and they can just push through anything, and like, they can be like, running, and like, you know, like, you can tell they're like, in pain in the second interval, and they're gonna do 10 more, and so like, you know, different athletes have different strengths, and so, I think the bottom line is you want to have a, pl a plan and a game set in your mind of how you're going to succeed. I mean, but you know, you're still so young. <coughs> yeah, and how do you like know uh, whether you're giving the excuse or you're like actually like having like like you hurt your leg? Or how do you know if you're if it's an excuse or if you're actually in pain, like having an injury? Uh, so um, you know, fatigue and pain are much different things. Uh, two things to kind of consider are, uh, you know, when you feel fatigue, most likely it'll be in your lungs. You know, you're gonna feel, your, your body itself will feel worn out, and then pain for an injury will be, you know, localized in a certain area. And so for me, my Achilles injury, you know, it's right in my leg, you know, like, <laughs> and I'll feel that. And that's one thing I'm actually gonna really struggle with specifically is, you know, is part of how the Achilles uh, injury works, um, it's super sensitive, and it can, if you re it, you can take it all the way back. But um, you know how I've always been currently advised, like you have to work through a little bit of pain. And so you, I guess that question is, what pain is appropriate to work through, and what pain isn't appropriate? And um, you know, that's where I think you got to talk to your coaches, your starters, you know, and your coach will be directed to. But um, typically, my guideline is, um, how do you feel when you start running? When you warm up, and then if it ever gets worse from that point, if you're warming up and you're like, right, I'm working out. And I'm warming up, and then it's now getting worse. Then that's when you pull the plug, and it's kind of like, and um, and just when things are getting worse, typically just indicating that your body it's not handling it. And if you're not handling it, then there's no point in doing it. And certain types of injuries do respond differently. Like uh, muscle injuries will typically get better. Bone injuries will typically get worse as you keep running. And so you can't you can't run through a bone injury sometimes if it's like a muscle thing. Like it'll warm up, and that's why working dangerous is like. Maybe it's gonna warm up, maybe it won't, you know. And um, you know, like honestly, typically it's, it's usually better to be safe than sorry because you know if you overdo it for a day, you may have to sit out for a week. But if you just sit out for a day, then you you'll be better the next day. And so it's but you know there can be times like there's been times where I push through it and it's been great and it's, that's what's gotten me better. Is you know I kind of had to take that leap of faith and. And the times I've pushed through it, and now I'm I've had it, I'm out for a year, and I missed the whole last twenty, you know, fourteen or twenty fifth, you know, I missed the basically the twenty fifteen track season, and um, you know, I had 
uh, had a good shot to make a U.S. team. You know, that's basically the, the pinnacle, <coughs> aside from meddling, but for you know American athlete to make a team is you know the, a big dream. I still have next year, but you know, I, I'm still in the middle of my injury and I'm doing therapy. But the best thing from for me is like you know avoiding pain. But um, I guess when it comes to, like a workout, like uh, when you're physically doing the workouts, like just because like it hurts like your body, that doesn't mean you give up. Uh, that, I mean, it, you know, you gotta. Um, you don't ever want to train too hard, though. Like you don't need to like just kill it. You know, that's where you can kind of just like set goals that are appropriate. Just being a consistent athlete is better than being a high and a low athlete. Like especially in high school, like I would do a workout that was amazing, and then I just and then like I would be so tired, I'd take like four days off, and I'd do like one really good workout, four rest days, good workout, four rest days, and you know if I just done like. But you work out once a week then or twice a week versus if I've done like three workouts you get more actual volume in. So um, kind of pacing yourself. You know, you can be your best, you know, coach. Yeah, I mean that was just a great question and just a really great answer to it. There's I think we can also talk for a couple of hours kind of about that. Um, you know, Elijah well, talked about just the idea of communication, you know, when, when something's bothering you. Um, I mean some of you guys have been limping around the last two years. right here, what should I do about it? Um, because communication is key. Whether it's something, you know, it turns out to be something serious or it's just like you shouldn't split. I mean, at the end of the day, the, the body's kind of complicated, you know. Um, and just please, when, when something's bothering you, no matter how sort of minuscule you think it, it may be, say something. And that's not just us, it's when you go back home, it's to your coaches, it's to your parents. Um, how, you know, you guys, Support system. If you didn't have one, you wouldn't, you wouldn't be here. Um, and I wanted to kind of ask Elijah a question too. He was talking about you know, doing a hard workout and then making sure he recovers. If there's one thing that I think is universal for like elite athletes, especially that are, um, are sort of on the decline of their career, one thing that I found is universal is they all said they wish they would have rested more. And I think that's really key to sort of take in. And I think a lot of it is you have to have that confidence of just this idea that, you know, it's one thing to go out and run hard every day, um, especially if, say you have a, a teammate that you're, you're constantly beating in races, you constantly have to perform. Um, sometimes it's hard to watch them maybe be in front of you in a workout or in a distance, right? But part of, you know, you need to be intelligent as a runner. And part of being intelligent is also sort of taking your ego and throwing it aside every once in a while, realizing that, look, yesterday, you know, if you even, you know, some speed in there and stuff, three by four hundred, and, you know, you better believe that Elijah didn't do much you know, that day after. And, I, and part of that, besides just the principle of that would have been really, really dumb, is Elijah knows that he's a very talented runner. And he knows that he's going to be. Running ahead of him that day, he needs a rest day, and he's still going to be able to come back and be from the 45 and things in the field today. And maybe you could say something about the idea of you know, putting the ego aside every once in a while, especially as a youth athlete. Yeah, you know, the, um, I think for you guys, like, uh, you, you probably don't have quite as much you know, direction for your each individual program, and so it's kind of like you probably just train and run with your friends run. And um, like you know, I would say like you know, like what what's important is like when you feel tired, like you know, let yourself feel, like let yourself feel tired. You know, like oh, they don't feel great. Like well, let's take it easy then. You know, like uh, that's pretty simple. Like and then you know how I kind of see it when I train. Um, like all right, say if I have a tough workout Tuesday and I have a tough workout Thursday, well, it seems pretty you know uh, simple out. Tuesday and Thursday are going to be here, and then Wednesday is going to be here, and Friday will be here, and Monday will be here. So like, you're going to have like hard and easy days, and and, and that's how it really is. So like, uh, I mean, mind you, I'm more of a middle distance runner, but like, when I was in college, like, I was probably I was the best middle distance runner on the team. Yeah, on my recovery days, I ran the slowest, and uh, and I don't know why I could I couldn't run with anyone else because everyone else ran too fast for me, and so. 
Um, you know, it's, it's realistically that it, you, know, you don't need to go hard when you're sick. If they just say go out for a training run, like you're just training along, you know, it's, it's just about putting the time in. And um, you know, I, I guess like when you're doing your workouts, like you never want to be like always actively comparing yourself to someone else. Because you know, on my on my professional team, we'll go to training camps, and it'll be me and like Andrew Weeding is an Olympian, and then this, this other guy Ty Mulder who's really good, and then we got this guy Mo Amon who's you know a world champion, and like. Like I see Moe's doing a training run, and it kind of makes me want to do an extra training run. And then I see Andy doing this the core, I'm gonna do core. You know, it's and that's great. Everyone's kind of motivating each other, but like, um, you know, also take into account that like, you know, you can overdo it. And so like, when you're tired, when you're tired, like listen to that. And I do know some days that like maybe your coach will tell you to run like you know 460, but you feel so good, so you want to hit 55. You know, and then it's like, you know really like stay within the range that your coach gives you because they will slowly you know ramp up your workouts but if you're here and he jumps you to here then you're likely to go back there and they're kind of doing this, this wibbly wobbly and so as you if you kind of communicate you'll slowly progress and you'll be a lot more consistent because consistency is uh, that's key but you know like i guess you guys want to talk about recovery too like you know, uh, you know I, at such a young age like there's not a lot you really are in charge of your life but like like if, when you train really hard in a practice, like it's pretty natural. Like night and rest really hard, you know. Like and make sure that like you, know, you get some food afterwards, like water, Gatorade, and like a maybe like a banana or a recovery bar, or some sort of nutritional shake. And like I mean honestly, like some of the best athletes, they're sleeping like nine hours a night and then taking a like nap. You know, so like they're sleeping like ten hours a day. And like like the more you sleep, actually, the better you'll recover too. So like you know, sleep is good. I mean, honestly, I'm a pretty competitive guy, and so when I work out, like, <laughs> I don't like, I don't like it my myself handled in the workout. So yeah, I, I, maybe I'm a little too competitive at times, but I think being competitive is good as long as you know when to shut yourself down too. Because in, in some areas, you know, I'm very weak, and you know, everyone's going to be very weak at some things too. And, and you know, that's fine. You, you can be you can be super weak, you know, and as long as you know how to turn it on and be strong when it matters. Uh, the video we watched before you got here, this broadcaster talked about you going into your senior season with this new haircut oh, yeah. and this new, <laughs> kind of like, it's like you just made this big change and so I don't know if anybody else is thinking this, but just what were some of those, I don't know, maybe your change of commitment or some changes you made as an athlete that you think maybe helped your performance going into maybe your senior season? Yeah, you know, my, my senior year, I would describe myself as probably the most um, steady I ever ran. Because, you know, in college, I would have days where, like, they'd tell me to do a workout, and I literally couldn't do it. You know, I was, like, walking. And I, I bet you guys know what that's like, but, like, like, you just show up to practice, and you just feel so bad, you can't do this. And, and how, I fixed, how I fixed that, or how I feel so bad, is every day I would just do exactly what they said, and I wouldn't do more. You know, and so I really kind of gave myself like a steady streamline, you know, because when you go too hard in your workout, the next day you have to recover, but then if you don't recover quite enough, then your next workout, you're going to be a little tired, and then you're going to be tired of that workout, so you're going to take it easy, but because it took it easy for that workout, the next workout you're going to be awesome, so you're going to kill it, and so um, you know, I was just pretty streamlined my whole senior year, I was pretty consistent, I had great training, consistent training, and then that allowed me to then really get some even better workouts because I was, you know, just, I was so consistent. And so. I mean, the bottom line is like, let yourself feel good. I mean, you guys are pretty young, and honestly, like, I don't think you're killing yourself in the workouts, so you know, this may not be quite as applicable to you, but and I think for at an age like this, like, you know, have fun with it. You know, and how, and how you have fun is you set goals, and you don't think about everything too much, and you kind of, you find the stuff that you enjoy. And for me as an athlete, you know, I enjoy being athletic. I, you know, I enjoy the idea of like, you know, I was like, I always picture myself, I'm not like at the beach ball, and, you know, all the like, girls when I go to the beach, like, oh, he's so like, you know, it's, it's silly, but you know, you know, I just enjoy, like, <laughs> you know, I enjoy doing the core, I enjoy doing the weights, I enjoy, um, you know, the social aspect, and so it's like, just find the things that are fun, and, and you want to look forward to going to practice, you want to look forward to doing this stuff, and you know, maybe you're not going to look forward to everything, and, and at, at some point, like, you want to be good at this enough that it is work, you know, because you're, you're giving it enough time into it 
that it is actually kind of something that will work, but you want to also enjoy it. So like, and that that's natural. Like, your, every passion is going to have times where you're going to be put to a test, and so, but, you know, just, you know, don't don't ever make it too serious when uh, when it's not. You know, just, you, know, you guys are you're young, and you know, and. and this is a great opportunity to kind of, you know, define yourself, give yourself an opportunity to, to kind of discover something about yourself too. So, like, you know, just give yourself a, you know, a real chance. Like, cool. So, <clears throat> how did you recover from that uh, going to Junior Olympic Nationals and coming in dead last? You know, that was when when you have like these, I guess, races where you're just out there running and like things just don't click. You're like, I should be doing this, but I'm doing like, I should be here and I'm just here. And you're like, why am I just so off? And you know, every athlete, you know, some of the best athletes in the world, I mean, the best athletes in the world hit this. Like, you know, everyone has like their, their times and they suck. And you know, how do you get over it? Like, honestly, usually, um, you kind of just have to hit like a reset button. And you know, you gotta let your, like, your body rest. And so, you know, and how, and how do you rest? Like, you know, everyone has like different things that they need, but. I mean, you gotta like. I mean, honestly, for me, I had just that year just had to be done. Like, you know, maybe it was 2006. 2006 just had to be over, and then 2007, I was ready to like do it again. So like, sometimes you just gotta give it up. But um, you know, how do you reset? Like, also, it's typically um, when when I know I'm struggling. Let's let's just say like you're in the middle of your track year, and your goal is to run 420 for 1500, and you're running 440s, and you're dying. You know, like how and, and how I how would I reset? So I, basically, I would set a new goal, and I want to hit 435. You know, you gotta just kind of start where you're at, and then also like say if you're going out in 70s for each of your lap, start just going out in 75. So like for me, like I have to allow myself to feel good, and then once I feel good, then I can start feeling great. And so if, if I'm already feeling bad from the beginning, it's just like a it's a hopeless cause. So like basically, you just kind of slow things down and allow, go to a spot where things are comfortable. Think of it like an injury. Like, oh, I, uh, my arm hurts, and I'm gonna keep on just doing this exercise, and I, it keeps hurting. It's like, no, that's not a good idea. Like, you want to do the drill at the at the appropriate way that it won't hurt. And so it's like with running, you want to do the appropriate running that it will feel good. Uh, once like you're feeling good, then you can kind of go faster and faster and do more and more weight in the same way too. So, and, and I mean, honestly, like, a lot of running really does translate into other areas of life. And so like. Being intelligent and thinking about it is that's a great way, and it will apply to other things. Yeah. Do you ever utilize visualization, and if you do, what does it like look like? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, honestly, like in high school, it's probably the best at the visualization, I and mean, it's probably the best place to do it is because in high school you ne you never race anyone else that's that great, and so you can almost get in your head that you're like, the best person there in the world. You know, it's because you're your own little bubble. And, but um, how visualization works for me. You know, I I like to put points in the race where I'm going to be aggressive, where I'm going to be a winner, and you know that that typically looks like me, when I run the 800. Um, you know, I find a spot where I'm going to kick, and so I'm usually, or I'm going to find a spot where I'm going to feel good. And so, you know, one of my races, I was running a, a, an indoor meet, and so we had a 300 meter last lap, and so I told myself, with 300 meters to go, I'm going to feel awesome. You know, I, I'm just going to get to that, and I'm just going to. I'm gonna be running. I'm gonna be running. It'll be a bam. I'm gonna, it's just kind of like this explosion, and that, that's how like I work. And that's how like, you know I think is I I like to be explosive. I like to be like energetic, and and so you know I kind of visualize. I take the characteristics of myself that I like. You know, it's, and you just ask yourself, like, if the race was being perfect, what would it look like? You know, and it's kind of just, you have to correlate your visualizations to how your personality is. And so you just, I mean, and honestly, how you do that is you just think, what, what would it look like if I got my way? If I got my way, how would it look like? And that, that's basically then you see that and you imagine it, and then when you get in the race, you do it. And honestly, that comes with talent uh, too. So it's an, obviously not going to be a winner, but um, you know, you gotta, you gotta visualize it within your own little, your the realms and the world that you know is applicable to you too. But I mean, there's times like. Before meets, I'll, I put on the race singlet, I get in front of a mirror, and then I just imagine myself running. You know, it's kind of like, I'm going to run, I'm going to feel good. When I, when I get to my race, it's going to live, it's going to feel good, I'll be ready. And, you know, it doesn't work always. But when you can get to the starting line, and you start running, and, and it feels good, like so many races, it feels awful. So many races, you don't want to be there, like, and I just feel like, oh, this is the worst. And, like, 
And then you have to like kind of struggle through that. So how can you how can you help ensure that when you get to the starting line, you're ready to be there? Because when you're ready to be there, like that's the day you can PR. Anytime you can PR, that's the best you can ever. That's the best like you've ever been. So that's like that's a win, guaranteed win. And so and I guess visualization like. I mean, it comes with repetition, and so you have to do it consistently. You, you should be excited. Like, visualization done right, you're going to get goosebumps. You're going to be pumped. Like, your heart, you're going to feel it, and it, it's going to have passion. Like, um, you know, when I think about, like, some of my races, you know, I can feel, like, my arms tingling. I can feel it, and it's, it, that's, like, the power that the emotional response has, and that's the power that you have to create in your head. And so, like, you, know, you guys are so young, like, you probably haven't even like cre started creating those memories or creating those trigger things, but um, you know, just think about what's it like to win, yeah, you know? and like feel the whole experience. Like, feel like what are my friends gonna be doing? What's the crowd gonna be doing? How loud is it gonna be? What's it gonna feel like? How much, you know, how much is it not gonna hurt? Like, how easy is it gonna feel? Like, and, and going back for me, like I like it to look and feel easy. And it's like, and how much am I gonna draw the person that's next to me? You know, like, it's kind of like how. Honestly, like I don't like to win. I like to just destroy. You know, that, and that's like, an aggressive term, but um, you know, that's in some sense like you know you gotta be a champion. But it's fine. Yeah. Do you have any tips for the 800 runners? Yeah, you know, um, you know why I enjoy the 800 is the race is just long enough that I feel like you have to be able to work, but it's not too long that like you have to suffer. Because like the 1500, I just suffer so much, and, and I can give up on myself. But in the eight, like, is once you can is you can do a lap, and you kind of get tired, but then you'll see the finish line, and you can kind of keep on going. But um, you know, I think for the 800, like, really, it's it's a lot of it is just about rhythm and about how fast you can run, and how fast you can run and make it feel easy. Because like, uh, when I ran my PD, like, I went through 52, but the previous races I were going through 55. And it felt just as easy running a 55 as it did a 52. And that's why I ran a three second PR, because going through 55 felt just as easy. So, you know, for an athlete that likes to run the 800, like, you know, you have to figure out how to feel good running fast. And so that's why, like, sometimes your coach will have you do strides or have you do, like, 200s. And you're like, why am I doing this? Because, because they're trying to just build a repetition of running fast and letting it feel good. And I mean, honestly, before some of my races, I'll do like, my pre meet, I'll do like two by 200. Depending how fast those 200, like if I hit run a 24 for them, I know I'm probably 145 low shape. I'll, I'll probably run like 145 low in that race, just by like how easy that 25 feels. Because then when I get out, I'll get out the 25, and then I know I'll come back and you know, splits to run 145. So, you know, but I guess when it comes to the actual race and you're and you're out there running like, um, you know, it's it's about knowing knowing your body, knowing how to get out hard enough. And then knowing how to hang on and know how to feel good, but like, yeah, I guess like you gotta ask yourself like, are you a runner like to run from the front, from the back? But um, you know, specific advice like, like you, you, you're gonna have to like get out fast, but not too fast. So within your within your range, so don't be afraid to work. Don't be afraid to kind of die. Sometimes like 